Well, hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Money and Mindset at 40 Plus, where Jenny and I invite you to play big, to conquer your money fears, those money stories, and anything else that's holding you back so that you can live an abundant life. So good afternoon, everyone. Hello, my dear friend, Jenny. Hello, Sylvia. <laughs> I, I'm always excited, as you know, to be here. And we have a great episode for you today. Yeah. We're we're talking about women. And uh, this group is, is mostly women, I think, mm -hmm. who watch us. We attract women. Um, as coaches, we often work with women. I know I work with uh, women. And mm -hmm. Jenny and I love politics. And um, mm -hmm. we love mm -hmm. watching women in politics. And this mm -hmm. got on to, hey, how about we do a show about women uplifting women? Mm -hmm. And um, mm -hmm. Jenny has a great quote. Uh, we, we both have been reading Glennon Doyle's book, Untamed. And if you haven't, we've mentioned that book before on the show. If you haven't read it, it's mm -hmm. an amazing book. And yeah. uh, there's a quote that Jenny was like, oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God. This like totally relates to... <laughs> <laughs> to how people see, you know, see women. And we're going to start with that. But I just wanted a big welcome to you all today. Yeah. And uh, we've got Stacy on and we have Stacy on. <laughs> um, yeah, oh, Stacey, yeah, you'll love it, Stacy. Great book, yeah. great book to just delve into. I'm going to yeah. reread it. It's an easy, yeah. re it's an easy read because yeah. it is short stories. But I think you need to go back and really yeah get you know delve into yeah. her words she's yeah. an amazing storyteller and we love stories don't we we do love stories and and i'm going to read a story from her book and uh talk a little bit about it so this was truly i took a picture of this page and sent it to sylvia and i said we have to talk about this on the show mm. so i'm sort of three quarters of the way through the book and she tish is her daughter it i was at one of tish's soccer games and there was a girl on the other team who was just rubbing me the wrong way I could tell by the sideline body language and eye rolling that she was also rubbing several of my soccer mom friends the wrong way. I watched her carefully trying to figure out why this girl was activating us. I noticed that she walked with her head held high and with a bit of a swagger. She was good and she knew it. She went in for the ball often and hard like a girl who knows her own strengths and talent. She smiled the whole time like all of this was easy for her, like she was having the time of her life. All of this just annoyed the hell out of me. Hmm. She was 12. <clears throat> so Glennon, being Glennon, says, I sat with my feelings and I realized the knee-jerk reaction I'm having to this girl is a direct result of my training. I have been conditioned to mistrust and dislike strong, confident, happy girls and women. We all have. Studies prove that the more powerful, successful, and happy a man becomes, the more people trust and like him. But the more powerful and happy a woman becomes, the less people like and trust her. So we proclaim women are entitled to take their rightful place. Then, when a woman does take her rightful place, our first reaction is, she's so entitled. We become people who say of confident women, I don't know, I just can't explain it. It's just something about her. I just don't like her. I can't put my finger on why. Mm -hmm. I can put my finger on why, Sylvia. <laughs> it's mm -hmm. because our training is kicking in through our subconscious strong, happy, confident girls and women are breaking our culture's implicit rule that girls should be self-doubting, reserved, timid, and apologetic. Girls who are bold enough to break those rules irk us. Their brazen defiance and refusal to follow directions makes us want to put them back into their cage. Last paragraph, Sylvia. This really hit home for me because it explained to me why I was doing it because I, I was mm. embarrassed that it was happening and I couldn't figure out why. So, and I have two girls at home. So this is also very important for me. Last paragraph, girls and women sense this. We want to be liked. We want to be trusted. So we downplay our strengths to avoid threatening anyone and invoking disdain. We do not mention our accomplishments. We do not accept compliments. We temper, qualify, and discount our opinions. Oh, geez. We walk without swagger and we yield incessantly. 
we step up out of the way. We say, I feel like, instead of I know. We ask if our ideas make sense instead of assuming they do. We apologize for everything. Conversations among brilliant women often devolve into competitions for who wins the trophy for hottest mess. We want to be respected, but we want to be loved and accepted even more. Ouch. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Ouch. It brought, actually, I had tears in my eyes. I was reading that and thinking my daughter is that girl on the, uh, is on, she's on the soccer field. Mm-hmm. She's beautiful. She's strong. She's a, a great soccer player. And mm-hmm. I, I don't want her light mm-hmm. to be dimmed. Gosh. Yeah. So what can we do about it? How can we lift up everyone? How do we find How do we acknowledge our built-in biases? That was a big one for me. And how do we celebrate and and engage and and love, I think is the word we were just talking about before the show came on, love all of them for who they are and and what they bring to the world, what their unique light is. Um, You you know, as you're collecting yourself here, Miss Sylvia, (laughs) I'm going to get a Kleenex. You talk, I'm going to get a Kleenex. (laughs) do you know what hit home for me, listeners, was this idea? Do you know how many times I say things like, I'm not exactly sure, but, or I feel like, rather than saying, this is what needs to be done, I need a language retrofit, Sylvia. I need to go back through my language and take a look. And it's funny, because I had some feed forward from one of my team members, and they had said to me on the feed forward, you know, Jenny, you have great ideas, you have great intuition, you don't need to apologize for them, just go mm. for them and own them. And I've thought a lot about that feedback in relation to that quote. We are so conditioned to be the peacemakers. I find myself landing in that role in a team, picking up the stray bits and pieces, collecting the group. I spend all this emotional energy carrying the group around. Yeah. And I think I'm done with it. Yeah, I I was, I was thinking about that when we when we were prepping for this and uh, in a team you know how do we come off do we say well I think it should be this and often I know where I want to bring my team and I try and get them to think Mm. about that but then I was like no sometimes I just like this is what I want to do this is how I think we should do it and this is this is it right it's my idea and uh, I remember working with someone before and uh, having an idea and they went and took the idea and claimed it in front of everybody. And then when I went back, I sat on that. And I really didn't feel good about it because I had bought the idea and I didn't mind working with you on it, but to, for you to go and claim it and not mention me in there. Uh, and the, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And uh, then we were not great colleagues anymore, right? I, I, I claimed my power and that power, oh, oh, you know, I set my boundaries yeah. and yeah. I was not uplifted. I, I did not feel uplifted. Yeah. Another, um, you know, we were talking about, we think we uplift women, Mm -hmm. but do we really? And that uh, I was trying to think, I was like, ah, I think now more than ever I do. And I, cause I'm more conscious of it, but I recall, Mm -hmm. and I think an example is someone I don't even know. I recall criticizing, not liking Angelina Jolie, Mm -hmm. not liking her. It was really like, I would look at her and like, oh, I don't know. She bothers me. Like, ugh. how come? Because <laughs> she's a plastic surgery, or she's too pretty, or I don't know. I don't find yeah. her that pretty. But I was like, why, why, mm-hmm. why, why? And it really, I was like triggered by this. I was like, yeah. why am I being triggered by this? I don't even know this woman, and she apparently does amazing good. She's adopted yeah. all these children, and she's a UN ambassador, mm-hmm. and all the work. And I don't even know her. That's interesting, uh, right? Mm-hmm. And the women in politics, Hillary Clinton. So, I mean, I think that's a textbook. I mean, there were so many parts to that story, uh, Sylvia, but if you think of the parts around what she represented, how she was criticized for, in in a funny way, for being not feminine enough and not masculine enough. She kind of was in in both, right? Um, And her style, people were irrational about what it was that bugged them about Hillary and chose to vote elsewhere to a great dismay of the United States. Um, so all, I think politicians tra- are trailblazers for us in positions of power or, or symbolic positions of power. And it's not gone unnoted to me that in the States, we have a vice president who is a woman 
who wasn't, I mean, she was on the ticket, but she wasn't who we were voting for. And I wonder no. how conscious that decision was at the democratic level um, to bring in that change, to to break down some of those glass barriers, but in a way that um, felt comfortable for all of those cultural norms that the United States still live within. I and I wonder if she were on the ballot, would she I wonder, have presented herself differently? I look at Alexandria Cortez, um, mm -hmm. you know, AOC, that young woman, that young mm -hmm. she's a congresswoman, right? Mm -hmm. She is, ah, like cuts with a knife. And the words that people have used, they use the B word, you know, to yeah. describe her all the time. And, I'm, and same thing with Hillary. And I'm wondering, mm -hmm. Kamala, Kamala mm -hmm. who, is, who is not on the ballot, comes off as softer as yep. more motherly what mm -hmm. is that role that that mm -hmm. women are ha like politics is a is a pre predominantly a man's world still yep. and the women yep. that are coming into that and making their way mm -hmm. they bring lots of masculine energy yep. and i would like yep. to see that that being a a balance yep. that comes that yep. that we don't have to that live in in the you know in that patriarchal way the so, framework so it ties into our preconceived notions of power as well mm -hmm. and the way power has been held and owned that auth authoritarian and i think uh ooh, this is a heavy show sylvia it is, but, yeah. but politics is a good example it's a physical manifestation of winning and losing in the most simple simple form um for those of you on the call i'd love to hear about the women that you mm -hmm. admire i'd love for you to be putting some names into the chat and i want to share with you something i noticed because um, I was in a mastermind group with a bunch of businesswomen and, and the business leader asked us, well, who do you admire? And the names I rang, ran, read off were, first one was Krista Freeland. I just think the woman is incredibly eloquent, capable, thoughtful. Uh, um, oh my God, I just love the way she speaks. And my second was Malcolm Gladwell who runs a podcast. And what I'm what I noticed after the fact, Sylvia, was those are both people who I admire for their communication skills and their, mm. their ability to say what they mean clearly with the right adjectives. And I sometimes wonder, because this is a coaching show, if that's not something that I either feel, uh, what's the word, inadequate about, or it's something I aspire to, um, or it's something I'm afraid of. I'm not sure what, but I know um, that aspirationally, often when I'm stressed about a speech, I just think, what would Krista Freeland do? How would she mm -hmm. act? She's your alter ego. Yeah. And, you know, I'm looking at, uh, if we look at other women in politics, we've got Angela Merkel, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, Margaret Thatcher, uh, you know, the, the, the names that were like thrown about her, uh, and the way she played, but then we look at the newer ones, the younger mm -hmm. ones, the new, the, the, the prime minister of New Zealand is yeah. being, uh, you know, claimed across the world and she doesn't have the same vibe about yeah. her. So I think yeah. we are coming perhaps, I hope with the younger generations yeah. coming where we're realizing this, you know, moving the, the dial to to more in balance and that allowing yeah. the more feminine not that we have to be motherly i don't think that at all yeah yeah i i we wrote some notes here and i think this is true being in our age group that we're in you know our generation more than any other generation was defined by men right so mm. i think about my mother was the very first generation who worked outside of the home so yeah. her mother did not right so we're yeah. they're very very close to that and we adapted i think our generation adapted to male power patterns to play ball we played golf we figured out how to get on the docket we figured out how to get into the men's clubs and all those things but i think now we are now asking how men can adapt to our definitions of power to play with us or to find a middle ground or to accept that there's no right or wrong way to do things i think by definition women are much more collaborative and thoughtful in their leadership styles i certainly have experienced that myself and i think you know if i think of a pendulum I rarely err on the side of too authoritarian I tend to err on the side of too democratic or mm -hmm. inconclusive or or delayed response or inactivity not that I'm inactive but it's it's the where I will land if I'm not sure I will be more pensive um because I'm terrified of not having a voice heard around the table now 
if I was a coach, Sylvia, I might pick up on that alignment <laughs> between tell me more about um, the importance of other people's voices. And that's that right. You. Yeah, 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 for sure. Mm -hmm. I was thinking back, I've had some very strong uh, bosses, women bosses in my mm -hmm. life uh, in the past. And I, I maybe I was like, my, my, my coaching would say, well, why are you being attracted to working for these women? Because they can, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a special breed. And they were always, um, I mean, now these women are in their sixties. Yeah, yeah. They're in their sixties. Yeah. So they're yeah. the same, you know, similar age to our mom where they had to, mm -hmm. it's a man's world. Right. Yeah. And, uh, you know, one, one example was uh, a boss who came to work and it's in a university setting and there it was, you know, uh, I'll change. I don't know if I need to change names or whatever, but it was hi Heather in the mm -hmm. snow. Right. And they used her first name Yeah, and it's in a university setting. It should be Dr. So-and-so. Right. And, but for her, it, they, they, the student, hi Heather, is that motherly. Again, mm -hmm. I come back to that motherly, mm -hmm. but they would never ever have mm -hmm. used that for mm -hmm. a man, uh, yeah. the, the Dr. Yeah. Shapiro who was there before her. And that was like, and I think then, example. therefore putting on the pants and saying, okay, well, we had, she had, you know, to, to blast through that for her, per, the yeah. perception that she held uh, on the, on campus, yeah. which yeah. was Absolutely. profound, which was profound, not yeah. always being liked though. I mean, these are women yeah. that knew that they were not there to be your friend. And I think yeah. there's, there are lessons to be learned there as well. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, so let's, let's talk a little bit more about, um, uh, energies. And, uh, you know, <laughs> I'm laughing a little bit about how my daughter perceives some of these things. So mm -hmm. my daughter's 13. And she's a huge AOC fan listens to every single one of her speeches and is such a strong, strong young woman at 13. And yet I can think of a colleague of mine who's like 72, who tells a story, Sylvia, about the board meeting, the guys, Government of Canada, by the way, moved the board meeting to one of their hotel rooms and oh. assumed she wouldn't come because it had been moved to a hotel room oh. with the scotch and et cetera. She was one of the team. So, of course, she got herself up and hustled her way up there. And, and there was nowhere else to sit but on the bed, Sylvia. You know, <laughs> and you can imagine you can imagine the chuckles that went on. Now, my point of my story is. I can see my 13 year old daughter telling me that that's fake news, telling me that never happened, that that, that was ridiculous because mm. the world has changed so much in such a short amount of time. Mm. Um, and you know, to be honest, until a real person tells you one of those stories and that that actually happened to them, I think that's where the Me Too movement really took up energy is we all had these things happen, but then didn't we go back and doubt ourselves and go, did that really oh, yeah. happen the way I remember it? I'm not sure, right? Like, here we go it with the not have. How could it have happened, right? How could and how could have I let myself uh, you know be in that situation we've all been in those situations yeah, yeah. and so. uh I like what uh Lara our friend dear Lara mm -hmm. had to say here with uh mm -hmm. you know so ready for women to stop thinking we have to be more than yeah. more like men to find success and I think that's starting mm -hmm. to happen we totally agree and I think it's you know with our younger generations I spend a lot yeah. of time you know uh uh, my daughter at one point, someone said, oh, that, that girl uh, is so, uh, so ugly. And then my daughter like looked at, there's an, yeah. uh, and I'm like, what do you mean? What do you mean? Yeah. And then, well, look, she's not pretty. And then my, I've never taught my parent, like my children this, and they did, had no, I like that concept didn't even, but that's an upbringing that's different, you know, and the judgment as women, I that's see it. this, this, see this, yeah. where this came from. It was a member of our family mm -hmm. and there was judgment there, but also as you know, I always bring almost every show back to the self-worth. If mm. we are judging others, mm. you know, when I said, oh, Angelina Jolie, uh, mm. well, what was I actually judging or lacking self-worth in myself? And then coming now to everything, you know, we were talking about love and, Ta and really yeah. abundance, tapping into bringing really love. I don't care, you know, it, whatever you do, it's, it doesn't, if it's, you know, it doesn't relate to me. And I'm so, going to love you anyway. I want you to pick up on that abundance. You you said something very profound before the call mm -hmm. about this new book that you're reading and how the concept of abundance and love being interrelated. Can you just pick mm -hmm. up on that? Yeah, yeah, it's this wonderful little book here. I know mean, it's not a book show, but uh, mm -hmm. the abundance book. And I'm reading this. And it is, you know, how to attract abundance in our mm -hmm. lives. And abundance manifests through people. 
as humans in this 3D world that we live in, uh, mm -hmm. we are all connected. And if you could just, you know, to simplify things, look at yourself in the middle and we are connected. We are connected. All of us on this call right now are connected, like with a, a vibe. Think of it of a, a light beam, you know? Mm -hmm. I'm sending you a light beam, Jenny, and the abundance will go your way and the waves will come back to mine. However, it has to come through love. Mm -hmm by this, mm -hmm. this gentleman, what he said there. But I, I resonate with that. And I have, mm -hmm. it's been part of my affirmations for a long yeah. time now is let me live through love. And that has changed my whole perception Interesting. about people around me, yeah. about patience. Patience comes out when you love the other person, no matter, you know, if you, even, you don't even know them, mm -hmm. uh, let's stop making the stories and the interpretations around them and just mm -hmm. send that person love. Love mm -hmm. comes back in abundance. You know, that's uh, the work I am doing at the moment. Uh, where it comes and that relates to women uplifting women. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's getting rid of all those judgments. Yeah. Okay? That's all the judgments we have. Hand up in the air, everybody mm -hmm. that's listening. I pledge. <laughs> To, to uplift yes. every woman that comes across my path mm. and see the good and the possibility in each and every one of them, whether they're two years old or 222 years old, Sylvia. Yeah. yeah. And I think the world will be such, imagine if everyone yeah. would do this, but we are yeah. so, so quick yeah. to, uh, to cut people down. But yeah. again, to bring it back to ourselves. We're cutting them down because of something that we are feeling. We are oh. feeling insecure. We are, Safety. yes. Like why did Hillary Clinton, you know, I always come back to her. She's an easy, uh, easy, mm -hmm. not target, but an easy person that we can recognize mm -hmm. and we all know, but you know, she was cut down for, and she had, you know, did have so much good and look at the person that came in, you know, in place and, yeah. uh, anyway, oh, yeah. Yeah, that's a whole other, I'm going to politics. So if, if love isn't your word, I want to bring up another word that, that feels the same for me as the concept mm. of compassion. Mm. And so often when I'm dealing with someone who's incredibly difficult, could be <coughs> teenagers, <coughs> could be donors, could be colleagues, Clients, yeah. right? Um, finding that moment of compassion, what is that person feeling? And how can I help in my very small way? And that to me does not involve giving up something, Sylvia. That's, I think, mm. a big important. Abundance implies that there's enough for everybody. Yeah. Yes, I have to make decisions about how I spend my time and et cetera. Um, uh, and, but it's important to give and receive. I am 100% behind you around that energy that goes around mm. and through all of us on this planet. Um, and just a shout out to all those amazing men I have met who yeah. are leading differently, who are leading thoughtfully, who are creating spaces at tables. My work is board tables um, for all the voices to be heard. Um, somebody called it, um, oh, a benevolent dictator, this idea of benevolence. That, maybe that's not the right language, uh, but it's the idea that you have to, to facilitate a meaningful conversation. You must be clear and firm, but also inclusive. And I, I think that's something I'm always aspiring to is that everybody feels heard and valued but also we come to conclusions and we move forward. And there is a way to do it if you set the intentions for how you want to work together. And that's mm -hmm. what I love about the, the next generation of men and how they're working with women. Mm. And um, I'm looking at the comment here by Colleen. You know, she's saying we need to celebrate women's successes, including mm -hmm. our own. And uh, in a recent group, uh, recently in a group that I'm in, this was the talk was this mm -hmm. actually pat yourself on yeah. you know, physically pat yourself. And this was a hard one. Women broke down. They're like, Oh my gosh. You know, in our coaching groups as coaches, we're very, uh, we put these in our groups and our Facebook groups. Okay. What are our wins this week? And we understand the importance, but a lot of people have never done that before, yeah. you know, no matter the small win and around the table at the dinner, I'm like getting my kids to let's celebrate yeah. our wins. Let's start yeah. doing this, you know, you know, get early on in our lives, get comfortable celebrating and sharing with others and patting ourselves on the back and recognizing. So yes, Colleen, yeah, not be threatened by other people's successes. And that's a hard one. I mean, it's, it, this is all work, right? But we're doing the inside work. This is what the show yeah. is all about. When we ask you to play big, it's all about work that we're doing inwards first. Yeah. Yeah. You know, well, how about others? I'm going to pick on that, pick up on that, that inside out, right? Mm. You, you can't play big without defining inside 
what it feels and means like to play big. And for me, it's going to be different than you and different than Stacy. And sometimes that involves playing big with money and sometimes it doesn't. Um, but thinking of money as a tool um, in your journey to play big and, I, you know, going back to knowing what you want and how you want to show up. I'm realizing in my, in my fifties <clears throat> that uh, we, we must be more intentional Mm. about things or they just happen and I only have another 50 to go Sylvia and I want to make every single one of those moments count and I want to make sure the people around me feel uplifted supported engaged and empowered and uh, so uh, like I said with that pledge it's 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 150 percent for me I'm in and yeah. you can call me on that for sure I will well, I think we, this is a good lead up to, uh, we're going to end the show here. Uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, for all those mm -hmm. listening in the replay, if you like this, please subscribe and we'd love Me to too. have you live. Uh, we have a great show that's piggybacking on this one. And it's going to mm -hmm. be our last show of the year. Oh my mm -hmm. gosh, can you believe? And just so you know, there'll be some really exciting changes coming in January. We, we're not going to give it away today, um, but we've had some shifts and some opportunities. So in January, you're going to be hearing from us about some updates. But the next show is a lot of fun. And maybe we should invite our listeners to provide some suggestions. Yes. The show is called Guess Who's Coming to Dinner? So if you want to start putting in the chat or putting in our, our notes in YouTube, who would you love to have come to dinner and why? I think that's really important. Sylvia and I are already kind of coming up with our lists and uh, yeah, it's hard to pick and we're only going to yeah. have 10, right? That's 10 is the number. Five. Well, we said, we said 10. Yeah. If you were having, you know, if you were going to have a dinner party with 10 amazing people who would, you know, yeah. and not, you know, we're, we're thinking, think out of the box, think out of your family, right? I mean, if this is an opportunity, anyone in the world. Oh, I can think of one right away. So I'm going to hold on to it though. Zip. Zip. That's good. Well, thank you, everybody. Uh, have a wonderful week. And we're going to catch you here on Thursday. If you would like to reach out to Jenny, you can reach her at chavender.com. And you can reach me at sovibrant.com. And uh, yeah, check back in next week because we will have a couple of announcements for what's happening in January. Have a wonderful Thursday, everybody. And have a great week. Okay. Bye. Bye.